Um, thank you, Abraham. I want to talk about God in the traditional sense and Abraham and infinite intelligence. Uh, I hear the phrase communion with God, being one with God. I hear you talk about blending this self with my higher self. When I'm blended, I am my most fulfilled, I am my happiest, I'm peaking with joy, the world is beautiful, I see life through the eyes of source. When I was younger, I wanted to be a monk so I could be in an environment where I could commune with God, and the whole environment would induce that. I didn't become a monk, uh, but I still have, I'm asking for clarity. Is there the possibility, other than blending with me and being the, the everything I have become, uh, my highest being, one with my highest being, is there another form of communion with a larger entity? No. No, it's, it doesn't get any bigger than that. It doesn't get any bigger than being out here on the leading edge in vibrational alignment with all that you're calling God. When? We, we, we want to jump in just yeah, yeah, one yeah. quick insertion. You talk about you wanted to be a monk yeah. because what were your words? Because I wanted to be in an environment in an that environment would induce this that community was conducive to that. And, and what was that environment? The monastery. But but what was it about that monastery? Focus. And and why was it? Why was focus more likely seeming then? That's what I understood. Because then. it's general. Because you're withdrawn from so much. There, there's so much time in meditation. There's so much time in solitude. There's so much time, there's so much time in general. There's so much time in being general. But we promise you, that which you call God does not want to be in the monastery. <laughs> Wants to ride bicycles with you, wants to hang glide with you, <clears throat> wants to make love with you, wants to eat food with you, wants to soar with you, wants to contemplate with you, wants to revel with you, wants to be exhilarated, wants to climb your highest peaks, wants to view your beautiful world, wants to watch your weather patterns, wants to be part of this physical world, wants to explore the biology and the geography, wants in on every part of that, not just some soft Solitude, which is required in order to get you to stop mm -hmm. fussing and worrying about things. Mm -hmm. You see, we want you to start general too, but we want you to get more and more and more specific and we want you to get out on the leading edge and we want the specifics of all that you've ever become and all that you are and all that you want to rendezvous with you now, 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 now. <laughs> So when I was on my way to Australia for the Australia and New Zealand cruise, I watched a movie on the airplane, Eat, Pray, Love, and there was a phrase that s just jumped at me. It said, God dwells within you as you. God dwells within me as me. And what you're saying is that's it. That's where it is. It's my highest being, everything I have become. Yes, my, the fullest and the expression reason, of and who the I reason am. it's hard for people to get that and accept that is because so often humans are focused in ways that they are disallowing the fullness of that. You see, it's not that that isn't there with you, it's that it's there with you and you don't know it. It's there with you and you don't know it because you're worried about being late for work and you're worried about getting caught in a snowstorm and you're worried about what somebody said and you're worried about not being appreciated and you're worried about being left out. You're worried about, you're worried about things that matter to you, but in your attention to these lackful things, there is a thing that you want that you're depriving yourself of. And so you mute your ability to know that. Years ago, Esther walked down to the gate to open it. Jerry was bringing the, the vehicle. And they had been basking, they had been walking, they had been meditating, they would had a nice meal. So they were all tuned in, tapped in, they were feeling really good. And Esther was just frisky and she just went down to open the gate. She was waiting for Jerry and he was delayed doing something. And while she was standing there, she had this moment like she'd never had before, where everything looked more beautiful than her eyes had ever seen. Things she was accustomed to looking at looked different to her. She could hear birds singing that were so far away she could not even see the birds. 
the fragrance of things in the air and couldn't even see anything blooming but there it all was all around her all of her physical senses were heightened and she is standing there feeling feeling the emotion of it and feeling the amazement of it because it was so extraordinary so pointed in this moment and all of a sudden she said ah oh, Abraham it's you isn't it and we said you've caught us again <laughs> peeping through your eyes, smelling through your nose, hearing through your ears, feeling through your skin. And it was Esther's first awareness that in her moment of allowing, our ability to explore her environment, which is so much keener than her former ability to explore her environment, gave her a richer, deeper, more satisfying experience, you see. And that's what we want you to know about all that you have loved who have reemerged into non-physical. There are so many people, so many energies, all of which you want to lump into a word and call God. But all of this consciousness, all of this loving attention and consciousness that is focused with you, not just because you're here in this forum, but in every moment of your experience, you have access to that. The question is, how open to it are you? And we've noticed that if we can make you aware of it, you might be more open. If we can make you expectant of it, you might be more expectant and open and allowing of it, you see. First, you got to acknowledge that it exists. Then you got to acknowledge that it's accessible by you. And then you got to do what it takes to access it, you see. That's all that it takes. You just got to know that it's there. Know that it's there for you. Figure out what it feels like when you're letting it in and figure out what it feels like when you're not letting it in and then work on feeling how you feel when you're letting it in and then just let it in more of the time till you build a grid and pretty soon you'll be walking around with that all the time, not just behind the big walls where you're having to be, where you're having to avert your eyes from unwanted things. But you can be out fully in the world with full view of everything, seeing everything through the eyes of source, knowing everything through the knowledge of source, being all all that you have carved out you see you in your human form don't take nearly enough credit for that which source is because of that which you are you keep wanting God to be finished and perfect and complete and you to be out here being tested to catch up with it and it's just not that way all that you're calling God is expansive and here and experiencing the fullness of all that all that all that all that all of you have allowed it to become and you can too you see you can experience it now and you will when you croak you just don't have to croak to do it great answer <laughs> um, point of clarification you say that in some dialogues that tired tiredness doesn't happen in the vortex and sometimes I'm home and I feel uh, what I call a delicious tiredness like I want to melt into my bed I've had a good day of living and I and it feels tired I'm tired I, but there's a part of me that, if, hey, if I can reach for energy like the ever-ready bunny, I'd like to be that full of energy. And I don't know where to go with that. Is, should well, I that's... melt into the delicious tiredness or should I align with more energy? I'm not clear. I... Well, rather than calling it tiredness, you might be more accurate about it. It's a feeling of contentment. It's a feeling of restfulness. It's a feeling of peacefulness. Oh, it's, a feeling, it's a feeling of well-being. You don't, you're not wanting to be off the wall enthusiastic and passionate in every moment, in other words, but you can be in the, vor it, within the vortex there is a range of emotions that are all resistance free by earth standards. In other words, you can feel satisfied without feeling enthusiasm to act. And really what we're talking about is when you, when the, when the grid is filling in with detail, that's usually when you have more passion. When the grid is just being the grid, that's, when, that's usually when you feel more satisfaction and contentment. So think about it. When you lay yourself down to rest, isn't it your intention to no longer act? Mm -hmm. So isn't it logical that you would just rest in the energy of the grid, the emotional grid? But if you lie there, thinking that you need to act then your mind sometimes is too busy or or you or you don't feel like you or you don't sleep like you want to it's all about intentionality and intentionality is all about focus 
So we would acknowledge when we are at the end of wanting to act in the day that we are, we are wanting to just rest softly in the grid. And that's wonderful work. You can set up your whole grid expectation for the next day or two or three or four just by lying there in acknowledgement of the well-being of your life experience. Just solidify that grid by letting the mattress absorb you, by mm. feeling the deliciousness of the fabric upon your skin. That's, yeah. that's good work. That's, that's the best work to do under those conditions, unless you want the grid to fill in with action. If you want the grid to fill in with action, then, then you probably aren't lying in your bed. Right, right, right. One last quote. We, we, we want to make a point of the distinction between tired or exhaustion or overwhelmment are all about resistance. It's all about, it, and it's about time scarcity it's, it's, or money scarcity. It's about some, some lack that you have active in your vibration that is in the way of moving towards something that you want. And so when you realize that everything that you feel is about what you're focused upon and then you get more control over your focus and we've been saying by the more general you go the better you're going to feel to a point but you're you all of you are you you really don't want to just lay down and rest what you really want is to be free of resistance and when you're free of resistance you'll be sleeping a whole lot less when you're free of resistance you'll be looking for those moments those grid moments you, we can see for many of you almost immediately finding more of those grid moments and therefore needing much less time to sleep finding more of those general grid moments and then getting into your day where your grid begins filling in and you'll find your you'll find passion ensuing as the grid starts filling in with more and more things that are specifically of interest to you did, did you follow that does that make sense to you we're not demonizing sleeping we think it is a wonderful thing we think slumber and rest is a very good thing but the only thing you need rest from or release from is resistance and resistance is all about vibration and vibration is all about thought so if you do this grid work in the way that we are presenting it here and you find yourself happy in the grid work you can spend 64 seconds doing grid work and finding that place and set yourself up for an influx of things filling into the grid and you'll find yourself feeling clear and enthusiastic wanting to make phone calls wanting to go places you'll find yourself rendezvousing more and more and more with more of the things that you want and people will say oh you've been going and going and going aren't you tired and your answer to them is why would I be tired I have the leverage of the universe flowing through me I have the energy that creates worlds flowing through me I am a vessel through which it flows why would I be tired and the only reason you would be tired is if you summon more than you're letting through summon more than you're letting through that will make you tired summon more energy than you're up to speed with you're gonna need a nap but you won't be able to sleep you just thrash around if you summon more energy than you're able to allow through, you feel tired. But never will you from a place of allowing an alignment. That, that's not tired. That's not a feeling of tired. That's a feeling of contentment. That's a feeling right. of well-being. Right. Big distinction. Yeah, that's I appreciate that clarification. One last thing. I may be on the verge of a big change professionally. I feel it. I don't see it yet. It hasn't manifested. Can you, you can read my energy and my vibes. Can you uh, clarify what would be a next logical step for me? What, what should I do? I have this feeling of imminent change. It yeah, hasn't. We could, we could point it out to you if we wanted to defy every word that we've spoken all day here today. <laughs> I want you to feather my nest. <laughs> and what we mean by that is, if you want us to fill in your grid, <laughs> then hey. we shouldn't have a, ought to been talking about the grid all day in the way we have been. Okay. So, no. Okay. <laughs> I thought I'd give it a shot. <laughs> but we will say to you that as you continue to do this grid work, in other words, Oh, what could be better? Really, we want you to answer this question. Could anything be better than that feeling of on the vergeness? Think about it. 
mm. inventor <laughs> on the vergeness on the vergeness on the vergeness is there anything better than that anticipation of something